Hello, welcome back to Silver Thread Sewing. I'm Diane, and this is Friday Sews. So thanks for stopping by my channel. I won't uh, take up much of your time this week. I've just got a uh, one almost finished item and another one that I'm working on. Um, first, I want to say thank you to Jen from Today in Jen's Sewing Room for starting this hashtag and for allowing all of us to enjoy being together and the sewing community to come together. We talk a little about sewing, a little about uh, a little about life, um, and it's just it's just been wonderful. And I feel like I have made so many friends because of this uh, Friday Sews hashtag. So thank you, Jen, from the bottom of our heart. We thank you. Um, I have had a couple questions about my Largo cargos that I made last week, and I have been wearing those, and I've already washed them and um, put them back on again and wore them and washed them again, so they have done really well, and I, I'm enjoying them thoroughly. The questions I had was, had I done any alterations to that pattern? So, the only alteration I made, I raised or lengthened the rise by two inches. And the way that I knew I needed to do that, I took the pants that my sewing buddy drafted for me that I knew fit me well, and I held those pattern pieces up to the pattern pieces for the Largo cargos. Now the back rise, it was, it was identical, so I didn't need to do anything to that. But the front was about two inches shorter on the Largos than on my self-drafted pattern. So um, I looked at the pattern for the Largo cargos, and they told me, Love Notions told me how to increase the rise, how to raise it. Basically, all you do, you split across the front um, and leave a hinge at the side seam and add add two inches in and straighten everything back out and that's what I did and it worked and so today I took a pair of ready to wear jeans that I love and I just wanted to kind of just see how that looked uh, compared to my Largos that I made and it was exact they were exactly the same and I they fit very similarly <laughs> similarly um but if you have a pair of ready-to-wear pants or if you have a pattern that you know fits you really well, I think you could compare the Largo Cargo pattern to your either already-made jeans or pants or your pattern and see how much difference there is. And that would tell you if you need to shorten the rise or lengthen and if it needs to be done on the back or the front. But that's the only alteration I made was added that two inches. And I was a little scared because I thought, you know, all the shirts and dresses and things from Love Notions fit me really well. And I thought maybe I shouldn't even do that. Maybe I should just make them as they are. But I knew I wanted them to fit me the same as my self-drafted ones. Well, I didn't draft them, but my friend did. So, Joan, you did a great job <laughs> because that, that was all it took. I just lengthened the rise by two inches. And I have ordered some um, green, kind of an olive green fabric from Fabric Wholesale Direct. Um, and it is like a duck canvas almost, but it is a lightweight. It's lighter than a, it's not a heavy duck stiff kind but it was uh, the olive green color that I've been wanting and looking for, and I wanted to make something besides corduroy, and that's the only other bottom weight fabric that I had. So I have ordered that, and when that comes in, I will make another pair, but um, I'm loving the Largo Cargos. So I had, if you recall, I had a whole bunch of stuff cut out. I had like nine or 10 things. So I had just went and and pulled out the next thing that was like in front, and it was the uh, Love Notions Melody Dolman top. And I was a little worried because I've never had great success with collars, and um, it does, I think this is called a camp style collar, I'm not sure about that, but it is the Love Notions. And this is what I came up with. Has the rounded hem, and I only have pins where the buttons and buttonholes need to go, but it turned, it matched really, really well. And I was real happy with that. And 
I think my collar looks pretty good. It needs to be pressed. I can't really see what I'm showing you, but it needs to be pressed. But this is just a double gauze fabric that I got in a Walmart bundle. And I've had it for ever so long. If you can see, this is just the inside of it. But I like the the checked, or this, this part better, the plaid, I guess you call it. But I still have to do the buttons and buttonholes. Didn't do anything different. I made it per the pattern. And it has the cuffs on the sleeves, and they are the dolman sleeves, so it was all one piece. Now, um, after I did this, I watched last night the um, video from Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. And she shows how she drafted a facing for this back area. So, basically, you would attach this front facing, which is grown on, I guess. It's all one piece, and you just fold it back. And she drafted a neck facing that would go back here, and then she top stitched it down. So I think when I make this one again, after I get through my little box of projects, um, I think I'm going to try to do that and draft a facing for this one. But I am really happy with it, and I can't wait to show you when I get the button and but buttons and buttonholes finished. Now, the last thing that I have uh, got to show you this week, when I first started this little channel back, Oh, wow. It's been probably eight, nine months ago. I don't remember exactly when I started. Maybe January. So, maybe 10 months. I don't remember. But anyway, one of the first videos that I did was for this pattern. And it is the Boxwood Hoodie by the Mood Society. And this is a free pattern. And I had um, downloaded it and stuck it together. And I made it in this pink, bubblegum pink sweatshirt fabric. And this came from um, Fabric Mart Fabrics probably two years ago. I've had it for ages. And I've, I made this a long time ago too. But what I did, um, I made it, I made it one size through um, the top and through the waist. And then I graded out at the hips because I can't stand anything to be tight. And I'm wider at the hip, but I think I should have just made it per the pattern and lengthened it just a little bit I, because it, if you've ever watched that video, which I'll try to link below, it was, it kind of rode up in the back and I think it's because of my high round back and all that. <clears throat> so I needed to add a little bit of length, but I think I need to take out a little bit of width, but it's got this huge hood. And I have the fabric laid out on my table, and I'll, I'll insert a picture, but it is some uh, sweatshirt fabric that I got from Joanne Fabric, and it has strawberries on it. Now, when I got that, I think it was about $12 or $13 a yard, which for me, that's expensive. So, I only got like a yard and a half of it, and I don't have enough to make the entire sweatshirt. I, I'm hoping that I have enough to get the back and the front and maybe some scraps that I could do cuffs on another project or maybe a, a hem band. But um, I have some red sweatshirt uh, fabric that I got from a Walmart bundle. And I think there's either two or three yards of it. So hopefully the body of the hoodie, the back and the front will be the strawberry fabric. And then the hood and the sleeves and all that will be the solid red. And then hopefully I'm going to have enough to where I can maybe cut out part of the red on another one and use the strawberry fabric as an accent, maybe, if not the hood, because it's a, the, <clears throat> the hood piece is a pretty large piece, which I don't think I need it that large. I think I could probably cut it down to a much smaller size. But um, I do like having the hood on it because if you go out and it's snowing or raining or something, you've got a hood right there. So maybe I can get enough to maybe either do the hood or maybe maybe do some cuffs on the um, on the sleeves or maybe do a hem band or something out of the strawberry and then the rest of it be the red if I have enough. And if I don't, you know, I'll just save it and, and put it on something else. But I am hoping to get this hoodie made this week. So, I think that's all the sewing I've been doing. We're still planning to go out uh, leaf looking here in the next week or so. It's They've not really changed a lot. Um, it's still 
it's in the 50s during the day mostly. Um, I think last night when we went to bed, it was like 51 still. So it hadn't been real cold. But if we get a really cold snap, usually the leaves will turn a lot brighter um, before they turn loose. <laughs> so, um, so I'm still going to do that uh, hopefully next week and I'll have that to share with you. And um, my husband, I still owe him the, uh, the name that tool thing. So yeah, if you watched last week's video, you already know. But um, he actually got me a light today. It's an LED type light that um, I'm very excited about getting put up and I don't think it'll be incredibly hard for he and I to put up. So I'm hoping maybe I'll get that I can see. Um, and a little bit about life. I had, um, I was due to have my next eye injection um, week before last. And I'm not supposed to go more than six weeks between the injections, but they had called and my doctor had to be out so they were going to reschedule. So I called them a couple times over the next week and they kept saying, you know, that he was back in the office, but only in the mornings and they would reschedule me as soon as they could. So they finally called um, the first Monday, the first part of this week and said um, it was going to be the 30th of October before they could get me in. And that's almost that last two days being 11 weeks. So I'm, I'm having not, I think it might just be me obsessing about it, but I can tell a little bit of difference in my vision. And um, anyway, just if you're a praying person, just as you think about it, just pray that, that my eye will be okay till I can go back on the 30th and get my injection. Um, and I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, it's just kind of stressful because I don't want to get the shot and I dread the shot, but I know I need it. <laughs> so, so it's always something. I'm always having some kind of a disaster happen, and I know, I know, it's just, it's just how I am. But anyway, I have enjoyed talking to you guys in the comments and your questions, and I hope that answered as far as the alterations to my pants. And um, just remember, don't ever give up sewing. It's a great hobby, and what's the worst that can happen? We could learn our strawberry fabric and cry, but you know, tomorrow will still come, and it'll be fine. <laughs> And I do, um, I do know that there's an awful lot going on in the world right now and an awful lot of people who are displaced and suffering in ways that I can't imagine. But um, I do hope that as we go about our sewing and our daily activities and try to uh, do what we can, um, I hope that that will bring peace and a little bit of joy and a little bit of a break from reality. I um I know that it does for me. Sometimes I feel a little overwhelmed with things. And when I sit down and start watching and thinking about sewing and, you know, it, it kind of takes our mind off of reality for just a little while. And uh, I hope it does for you as well if, if you're one of those people that need it. But thanks again for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.